Hi. Now, in this last question, we're asked to determine whether studying biology and studying chemistry are statistically independent. And it turns out that they are. B is independent of C. And to prove this, we need to justify it. We can do it in several ways. And I'll show you those different ways, OK? Or you might want to fast forward just to quickly view the final solution. One way, and I believe this to be the best way for this type of question, is to look at the probability of a student doing biology given that they do chemistry and compare that to the probability that they do biology. And if they, those probabilities are exactly the same, then B will be independent of C. It won't matter that the student does chemistry, okay? Well, let's just look at this probability first of all. Probability of a student being picked doing biology given that they do chemistry. Well, if they do chemistry, it'll be out of this section here, okay? A total of 28 students. But of those 28 students, how many do biology? Well, it's the four and the three here, okay? A total of seven students out of 28 students doing chemistry. So we've got a probability here then of seven out of 28. And if you reduce this down, it comes to a quarter. Now, if we look at the probability of a student being picked just doing biology, then we've got how many students doing biology, okay? We see that there are 20 students out of a total of 80 students in the college. So that's 20 out of 80. And if you reduce this down, it equals a quarter. So you can see we've got exactly the same probability then. So the probability of someone doing biology is independent that they did chemistry. OK, so B is independent of C. I'll leave it up to you, but you could do a similar argument if you did the probability of C given B and compared it to the probability of C. You should find you get exactly the same probabilities. Now, another way of doing this which generally I would do, say, when it comes to working with probability tree diagrams, but you can do it still with this one. And that is to pick up on this idea. To work out the probability, okay, of both events happening, that's B and C, B intersected with C. And to check out whether it equals the probability of B times the probability of C. If this is true, it will only work for independent events. OK, so I'll just put that up there. I hope you can see that as I squeeze it in there for independent events. That rule is true. Let's check it out. Let's work out, first of all, the probability of B intersection C. So the probability of B intersection C, that's going to be this region in here, the overlap between B and C. And you can see it's 4 plus 3, a total of 7 out of 80 students, the whole college, OK? 7 out of 80. Now let's look at the probability of B times the probability of C and see what value we get. Well, the probability of B we've seen is 20 out of 80 or a quarter. I'll put that down as a quarter. And the probability of a student doing chemistry, that's 28 then out of a total of 80. So you've got that times 28 out of 80. And if you do a quarter of 28, that cancels down. One there, seven there, OK? So you end up with seven out of 80, seven eightieths. And can you see that it matches up with the probability of B intersection C, seven eightieths. So therefore, 
By this rule, they are independent. So B is independent of C. So I hope it's given you some idea then if that caused any problems.